What's up guys, Koi51 here, time for another video, and this time it's we're gonna flip the coin on this one for the uh, Fire Emblem sort of character analysis, and we're gonna go with the uh, the other side of the spectrum, which is the Gnaw, and uh, the, like we've got the article right here, it's been translated from uh, from cantopia.wordpress.com, I'll have the link in the description below, but let's get straight into it, I mean, we've, we've pretty much covered the Hoshido side, but this time we get to see a sort of like... Uh, another side of the coin in terms of family. Uh, we get to see uh, the protagonist if you choose to go to the normal sort of side, which is sort of like your adopted family in this case. Adopted sort of, yeah. So, uh, so let's get straight into it. So, the princes and the princesses of the kingdom of Nor who come who came to be family for the protagonist, though not related by blood, the time they spent together has formed inseparable bull bonds between them. If the protagonist sides with them, then the dream of changing the country becomes a reality. So, let's go straight, uh, let's go from, let's say, uh, let's leave, let's do sort of same sort of thing that we did with the uh, Hoshido analysis. Let's go with Camilla first. So, Camilla is the first princess of the Kingdom of Nor and the protagonist, protagonist's older sister. She dotes over the protagonist. Uh, details on the Revenant Knight have not been announced, but we guess it is a class that attacks with a very large axe. So, she seems to be the older sister type, you know, very, it's a very sort of thing that we've seen in a lot of anime and stuff like that, which, um, you know, uh, it, just from her personality alone that we've seen from the trailers, she seems to be very, like, not so controlling in a way that's so, like, um, detrimental, but sort of, like, She's kind of like a matriarch in a way. She's very like mature and very caring and stuff like that. Uh, so I think that's really cool. So her, her quote is, "Don't you worry, uh, don't you worry. For you, I'll kill everyone who stands in your way." Sounds like a very motherly matriarch sort of thing to say. So uh, Camilla seems to be just sort of like uh, like a juxtaposition to sort of uh, Hinoka, but. She seems much much more mature because she's of the old. She seems older, so that's gonna be interesting to see how she and the protagonist sort of interact with each other. So let's go on to um to another character who is Eris, and let's see Eris, uh, the youngest of the Nor royal family. She has a she has a innocent uh, personality. Uh, Rod Knight is a class that was just newly announced. Guessing from the name, it is like the tr Troubadour class of previous games, a type of mountain unit that uses staves. So, uh, pretty much just like, I don't know if it's healing, I don't, I don't remember much of the older Fire Emblem games, but if she's a healer, then she kind of just, she kind of just is the juxtaposition of Sakura. So, her quote is, I'll do my best with you all, father will sure, surely allow me to. So, hmm, like how, like, I don't feel, like, she seems to like Kamui as an old, like, as an older brother. It makes sense. From the trailers alone, it looked very clear that she does have a soft spot for Kamui. But she seems to have a really close connection with her father, uh, uh, who's Gadon, I think is Gadon at this point. And it makes sense, you know, Ga uh, she, Eris is... Uh, Gadon's like youngest daughter so of course that she would feel like uh, like pretty much proving herself to her father in this case because she is the youngest but she also loves Kamui as well you know uh, as a older brother you know like probably sees like uh, just like little things that she doesn't see in her other two brothers maybe that seems to be the case in this case so let's go straight into uh, the second character who is Leon and Leon is a, I don't know much about Leon at this point, but uh, Prince of the Kingdom of Nor and the protagonist's younger brother. He seems to be an elite who can handle anything masterfully. In Fire Emblem Awakening, the Dark Knight class was a mounted unit that used swords and magic. Will Leon be the same? I think, probably not. He seems, in all the trailers, he seems to be off his horse and doing stuff like that. So, I don't know, maybe just me, but I'm, I'm expecting to maybe Dark Knight probably just be without the horse just like you know just he has like a knight you know we don't know i can't really see that he has a sword on him or anything like that so he just he's probably just like a battle mage at this point so we'll see 
uh, his quote is, Humph, one sword skill does not necessarily determine one's strength, elder brothers. So, does that mean that he has a sword himself? I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's just like, you know, he's just kind of just like a quick, like a little, like a, like a little thing where he's just like, yeah, you know, your swords ain't, your, your swords aren't as, you know, strong as my magic, that kind of stuff, you know, it doesn't determine skill, just because you have a good sword, you know, you know, you have good sword skill doesn't mean you're super strong, you know, I can do stuff as well, and that seems to be, that probably seems to be the case, case, so we get to our last character, well, I'll touch on another character who seems to be more interesting, but we got Marx, and Marx is a, the, prag uh, the protagonist, older brother, he is the silent type, as the first prince of the Kingdom of Noor, he follows his father's orders for the sake of, our, of the country. In traditional Fire Emblem, the first members is usually a unit who is a paladin and very helpful. Mark seems to be that. And his quote is, You have more strength than that. Grip your sword and stand. Stand as a warrior of the Noor. So, <clears throat> uh, Okay, so what can we see from Mark so far? So Mark seems to be just like the... The oldest, you know, he's a prince. He probably acts more of a prince uh, than all of them. And he sees himself as that responsibility, you know. He sees the responsibility that he is going to be the next in line to inherit his father's will. And inherit his father's will. So he's going to be acting according to that sort of, like, stipulation. He's going to be sort of uh, picking up where, he's, uh, where his father lacks in terms of, like, uh, ruling. So maybe he will have, like, a very strong unit. Maybe sort of like in Fire Emblem Awakening with Krom, having uh, the shepherds, who was sort of like just a sort of like a guardian force of the the people. Of, uh, uh, yeah, I can't remember the name of the the, 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 the state, but uh, maybe that's sort of the thing he does. Like maybe he's sort of like a, he's he's leading a command force, sort of like in that same regard, who's out there patrolling and making sure everything's okay. So he's pretty much his father's right hand man in terms of everything, and he understands that. So he he. He acts accordingly. Like so he, he seems to be a character that seems to be really cold and just like making sure that the job is done. Uh, I guess there's all speculation we have to see. So, for the last character we're going to touch on is Gadon, and I think Gadon is pretty interesting at this point. It's because he's he's the father of all these characters right now, and he at some point in the uh, in the game's uh, backstory, lore, whatever you have to, have to call it, he kidnaps the main protagonist. Now. As a as a, as a as a person who is leading a war towards uh, uh, pretty much just uh, an invasion, essentially into uh, foreign territory, uh, foreign foreign soil, or whatever whatever you have to say about it, uh, the fact of the matter is, Gadon had no obligation to save anyone. He was essentially wiping out a few people like as much he's wiping out people to establish his own sort of dictatorship or, di or his own rule or ideals into a foreign country so it leaves the question as why would you, why would Gadon uh you know take in a child of Oshido does he th like what does he see is it so something that just he saw as kindness or he saw as just an opportunity like there's so many questions but the reason why he did it is still unknown at this point, but that makes it interesting. Like, why would he do it? Why this particular boy, you know? Why, you know, maybe he was planning this from the start. Like, he knew that, uh, uh, the, because he is a part of the Hoshido royal family sort of thing like that. Maybe it's planned that he wanted to do this. So, I'm hoping for more details on this, uh, sort of speculation line onto Gadon because he must have maybe plot this from the beginning to steal one of the children to Hoshido and as a cruel joke, make him fight his own blood relatives, you know? Who knows? It could be just a horrifying sort of thing to, to think about, having someone who is your blood relative forced to fight you, and, you know, and that's the end of it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. What do you guys think of the Noor sort of uh, uh, entourage, if you want to say about that? And, you know, uh, it's just speculation at this point, but I am excited for E3 to have more information on Fire Emblem next, and hopefully, maybe even get a freaking release date, or maybe have them change their mind and release it this year. Be nice, be nice, be very nice. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Core51 out, have a nice day.